Those of you who are shooting high-res stills or 4K video will know the challenges of storage. Today, I want to introduce a solution, the new QNAP TVS871T. This supports Thunderbolt 2. Okay, so taking a look at this guy, I, you probably know that I am working with QNAP now. I contacted them ages ago. I was looking at getting some solutions. I got in their new mini, then I use that for my home media serving. It's working a treat, just completely seamless the way it all integrates with the new TVs and stuff. They told me at that time that they had something new coming that was really exciting and that was gonna be 4K capable. I held out for it and it's just gotten to me. They're just, it's only just been announced. They're just being shipped. But the 871T supports Thunderbolt 2. So this that's only exciting for Mac users. USB 3 and Thunderbolt were already so fast compared to what previous generations of transfer could do. This guy, Thunderbolt 2, is twice as fast again. So 20 gigabit per second. It's crazy fast. I've actually already been testing it a little bit, but let's go through now and set it all up and I'll talk you through, you know, it's really simple. It took me all of 15 minutes yesterday and I'm a little bit clumsy. Okay, so as I unpack this one, let's run through some of the specs. They call this one a triple mode storage. So this has a quad core uh, Intel Core i7 processor, 16 gig of DDR3 RAM. It'll take eight three and a half or two and a half inch drives. In terms of ports, it's got two of the Thunderbolt 2 ports, which will let you daisy chain. It's got LAN ports, two uh, 10 gigabit plus four gigabit ethernet ports. Um, it's got three USB 3 ports, two USB 2 ports, two big old 12 centimeter fans at the back. It's weighing in at almost eight kilograms. The interesting thing about this being dual network, having the Thunderbolt 2 and the gigabit ethernet, it means that it can simultaneously run the ethernet services in addition to any Thunderbolt 2 activity. And it says that it's completely independent with no bandwidth interference. So you can you know, have it working in two different directions at the same time without it slowing down. As I set this one up, you can see it's fairly straightforward. It's got four little screws per drive. There's two different types of screws there, depending on what size drive you're using. Following the setup instructions, pull the bay out, put the drive in, screw it, put it back in, no problem. Looking at the quick start guide, having done that, then it's a matter of turning the power on, plugging the ethernet in and then into the your router, then plugging the Thunderbolt in and plugging that into your computer and you switch it on. So I went with the cloud option, it downloaded the software it needed, and then it was set up and ready to go. So not quite as easy to set up as the Mini, there is actually some screws, you're gonna need a little screwdriver for it. And one thing to note, it doesn't come with the Thunderbolt cable, it comes with all the ethernets and stuff like that, but so you're going to need your own Thunderbolt cable. And being an Apple thing, you know, they'll bleed you a little bit for that, so include that in your budget. So having set that up, then putting it through and putting it onto the computer was all quite straightforward as well. I used the cloud verification system, just entered the details, downloaded the software, found it, chose what style of RAID that I wanted, and then it was all set up. Now, you may remember when I did uh, a speed test recently, I um, was just dragging and dropping files. A lot of people said, why did you do that instead of using a benchmark system? So this time I have gone and got the Blackmagic disk speed test. The, you know, until now I've been using a range of different things. I've got some disaster proof drives that I back up as a, an ultimate backup. I use cloud and then I use Drobos as well. But the Drobos just are nowhere near fast enough for video editing full HD, let alone 4K content. I've got a USB 3 one and I've got one running off Thunderbolt. So what I wanna do now is compare this one and see if it lives up to the hype, if I can really edit off of it. So I'm gonna run the Blackmagic and I'm gonna compare it to the Drobo. Then I'm gonna also compare it to my fastest two and a half inch drive, which is what I often edit with on the road. And I think it's an unfair comparison, but just for giggles, let's compare it to my new blazing fast Samsung T1, the little um, storage device that is SSD, um, just to see how they all compare. 
Now let's take a look at the speed test. Now if you've never seen this, this is the Blackmagic design test. Um, up top it's got the overall read and write speed that it was averaging out. I did these on the 5 gigabit uh, benchmark test. Bottom left, it's showing you all these different video formats from different levels of bitrate and different codecs to different formats and frame rates. And the bottom is the heaviest and most intensive. So you can see the Lacey only got the PAL and NTSC low frame rate, low bit rate. And then it shows you this uh, frames per second that it could handle on each of those on the right. So you can see down at 2K, it was only managing four frames a second because of the transfer speeds they require. Next up, let's take a look at the Drobo. Now it's performing markedly better, 154 almost right and 165 read. A lot more ticks down the bottom. Um, but still, if you want to be doing 30 frames a second looking on the right, there's um, not a lot of formats that it's handling. So definitely, you know, looking to even down at the, say, 50 frames a second or the 2K stuff, it's really struggling and it's saying it can't cope. So forget about 4K. Next up, the T1, that little blaster. Amazing, we're looking at 360 and 353, and you can see a lot more ticks down below, but still 2K and everything is only, you know, 20 frames a second. So, take a seat, here's the QNAP. Boom, look at that, 949 write and 747 read. Ticks across the board. And then, you know, look at some of those frame rates up the top, like NTSC and PAL, seven and 800 frames per second. This really surprised me, you know. It's um, it's still hard drives that we're working with here, but the, the processor and everything built into this one, and then the transfer, the interface, the Thunderbolt 2, uh, yeah, I'm speechless. Okay, so look, I was really quite amazed how, by a few things with this. First off, that, it was so easy to set up. I could do it without having to contact any of my IT friends. But the main thing is how fast it is. I honestly, I felt stupid doing the comparison to the T1 because I thought it was unfair. Small, non-networked, non-RAID, SSD, straight into the computer versus the uh, RAID system across multiple disks straight into the computer, I thought there wasn't a contest, and it turns out there wasn't, but in favor of the QNAP. For me, you know, to be able to have the files on something that's already in RAID and already then somewhat, or well, at least, a, you know, twice as secure as if I have it on a single drive, already then it's archived as soon as I'm finished working on it, and fast enough to do the video editing, that's a big thing. And you can probably see it here, it's a beast. It's a monster to look at as well. Now, I know this is a fairly untechnical video. There's people out there, well, to be honest, there'll be people who just don't like it because it's for Macs, whatever. But for those of you who are shooting Macs, using high-res files, wanting high capacity, but crazy speed, I mean, it's awesome. I'm really enjoying it. And I've actually already started editing the video on it in 4K. I'm filming this with the A7R2 and it's not dropping frames. It's working great reading the files from the drive itself. So everything I was looking for. In terms of speed, like I said, I'm using the four terabyte Seagate NAS drives in here. Um, you obviously could get, they, they make a fast NAS drive as well and then they also make the Barracuda ones as well. Um, in once you're using a uh, transfer like this Thunderbolt 2, it's likely to be the drives themselves that are going to be the bottleneck. But as you can see, those drives are giving crazy speeds anyway, and the NAS drives are made to, you know, work and work and work. So that's why I went for those ones. Now, as a form of disclosure, as I said, when I got the Mini, um, QNAP sent me these drives, I didn't have to pay for them. They're not, I'm not sponsored by them in the sense that they're not paying me to make this video though, but they did send the drives, when the, the units, sorry. When I first contacted QNAP, it was as a customer asking for advice on different units that would suit my needs. After getting in touch with marketing and talking things through, they sent out the first one, then sent out this new 871T that's just been announced. But there's no, you know, conditions on what I have to say or not say or what I'm not allowed to include. Everything that I'm presenting here is my own opinion. And I hope you find this of interest to you. If 
you know, you have a really limited budget, then this won't work for you. If you're not using Mac, then the Thunderbolt 2 is going to be lost on you. But if you're shooting, you know, large files like the A7R2 is shooting 4K and it's also shooting uh, large RAW files, RAW files, then having large and fast storage is really, really fantastic. So leave me any questions or comments that you may have and I'll see you soon.